Hello and welcome back to Rotary Rocketry. Today is part four in our series of developing a new PVC motor to launch our four inch rockets. If you want to watch parts one, two, and three, there are links down in the description to those. But basically, we worked on developing a new PVC motor design and nozzle. In one of the videos, we launched that in a rocket. The launch went okay, there were some issues, and that led us to try and improve the design. In improving it, we made the motor longer, a little bit bigger in diameter, and a little bit larger core hole size to get some initial thrust at the launch. Unfortunately, in the last video, four out of the five ground tests we did were failures. We had casing explosions, we had end caps blowing off, and we had the nozzle blowing off, a little bit of everything. So we decided to kind of take a step back and go back to the inch and a quarter PVC design that we originally had and that successfully launched the rocket and just work on improving that design rather than expanding that design because that led to a lot of failures. So this is the motor that launched the rocket in video number two of the series. It's inch and a quarter PVC and it has six and a half inches of sugar fuel inside. So we have two motors that we're gonna ground test today and if they go well, we'll actually go ahead and flight test them as well, but we need to do the ground test first. So the first one is pretty much identical to that. Um, Still has the number 20 nozzle. Now I did actually have a viewer ask a question in the last video, which was actually a really good question. Um, it was about the nozzle sizing. I kept referring to it as a number 20 nozzle. So here in the United States, because we use the imperial measurement system primarily, the nozzles are measured in 60 fourths of an inch. So 20, number 20 nozzle is 20 60 fourths, which is about 7.9 millimeters. Um, I'm not sure how they measure nozzles in countries where they use the metric system primarily, but I'm guessing you just refer to it as a 7 millimeter or an 8 millimeter or 9 millimeter nozzle. But here in the United States, it's always in 60 fourths of an inch. So we still have the number 20 or 20 60 fourths of an inch nozzle for the test today as well, because that worked well. This first one has one solid fuel cell inside which is identical to the one that we launched before. Now, we wanted to improve the initial thrust. Right when the motor ignites and right when we're trying to get off the rod, this really didn't seem to put out a lot of thrust. And we knew that it didn't just because of the design of that single fuel cell. You're only burning the inner core. So this had a 3 8 diameter core. We have improved that to a half inch diameter core. So that will give us some initial burst of thrust a little bit stronger than the previous one. That's the only difference as far as the fuel. Now we have made a couple of casing changes as well. You see here, we have a coupling here. We don't have that in here. That, even though it probably made the casing stronger, wasn't really there for strength. It was there because of the way that I was making the nozzle. It was easier to make the nozzle part first and then add the top section with the fuel later. I've made some changes to how I make the nozzle and now that coupling isn't needed anymore. So that also takes some weight off of the motor and um, reduces the price by a little over a dollar as well. So that's good. And then another change that you can't see is with the actual nozzle construction. Now we're using anchoring cement in there. Um, this one has about 33% less anchoring cement than the previous design, and it's a little bit easier to make. So those are both good improvements. Now, hopefully that one goes well, and then we're gonna move on to one more design. This is a much more traditional design for a Bates grain motor where we have individual fuel cells that are cast outside of the motor first in jigs and then we install them into the motor casing. Uh, what we've done is made three sugar fuel cells here. Now these are mathematically calculated to be symmetrical burning fuel cells which basically means they should have pretty much the same amount of surface area burning from start to finish. So the motor tends to give out 
almost the same amount of thrust from start to beginning as well. So we should have a good amount of thrust getting off the rod, good amount of thrust throughout the entire burn until it's complete. That's the reason for sizing these out appropriately. Now these do have the 3 8 core size. We drop that back down um, from the half inch that's going to be on the first test because we don't need that massive hole in the middle anymore because we've got the ends of each one of the fuel cells that will also be burning when it ignites. So there should be a lot of fuel here burning throughout the entire process. So we're going to load this up. We're going to get these all glued together and head out to the test site and see how they perform. The first one we're going to test is the three cell motor. All right, so the three cell Bates grain motor did exactly what we expected it to do. Good steady burn from start to finish, and it didn't explode. That was really expected because this is really the optimal design for this particular type of motor, and clearly the number 20 nozzle is a good size for this. So the next test is the one cell motor. Well, that was actually a little bit of a surprise because this is identical to the motor that we actually launched a rocket with, with the one exception that we changed the center core size from 3 8 diameter core to a half inch diameter core. It should have built up just a tiny bit more pressure because of that, um, but uh, yeah, it just didn't survive. Now, there could be two reasons for this. Um, Clearly, we could have just built up too much pressure. But since the time that we built the one that we launched the rocket with and this one, I've changed the design of the nozzle. It has about 33% less anchoring cement in the nozzle assembly. So that could have been something that makes this a little bit weaker than the previous design. So just to double check, we built one more with a number 20 nozzle. And I changed how I build the nozzle just a little bit again. Um, it's basically the same amount of anchoring cement, but I came up with a way that I felt was just maybe a little bit stronger. Here's the test for that. Okay, so. Clearly, a number 20 nozzle is not the way to go for this particular large fuel cell. Same exact results, blew apart the nozzle and cap assembly, identical to the previous one. So, I would say at this point, just too much pressure with this particular motor. I really am comfortable with the design of the nozzle. So, we decided to make the same exact motor again but increase the nozzle to a number 21. Here's the test for that. Awesome, so the number 21 really seems to be the solution. Now, the scale actually showed really significant amount of force. Now, the reason we haven't been showing the test scale data um, and giving you those numbers for these different motors is that scale that you see on the test stand has been damaged many, many times. Every time that one of these motors blows up, it does significant damage to the scale. I've got to disassemble it, pound it flat again with a hammer, put it all back together. Usually it doesn't zero out very well. Um, it's just taken on a lot of damage. After this project's done, we're definitely going to buy a new scale. But for right now, we're just using this damaged one and limping it along just so we can kind of see some differences between the different motors. But we know that the numbers that we're seeing on that scale are really not all that accurate. So um, we are going to get our rocket ready and we're going to launch two of these motors. We're going to build another one of the three 
Bates grain motors because that's really the traditional style for this type of motor and it gave a good thrust all the way through the burn cycle. So that's definitely one we want to see for a baseline test to see what the standard style motor is going to perform in a launch. And then we're going to build another one with the motor that you saw in that last test with the single large fuel cell with a number 21 nozzle and we'll launch with that. The real goal here is to see which one of these is going to perform better not only with just lifting the rocket off the rod but also overall altitude in the flight. So our previous motor was 1,206 feet. Both of these motors are lighter in design because we've gotten rid of some components and lightened up the nozzle, so they should perform very well as well. But it's a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say difficult, but it just takes some more time to build the three individual fuel cell motor as opposed to building the single cell motor, which is incredibly easy and simple and fast. So we're hoping that with the faster, easier system of the single fuel cell, we can get a similar performance to the one that takes more time and more effort to build because simpler is better. So we're gonna build some motors and go out and launch them. So the first one we're gonna try is the three cell motor. This is the most efficient style, so it should give us the best overall performance of liftoff and altitude. cell motor in three, two, one. All right, that was a total success. Beautiful landing. Uh, it's a really nice day, hardly any wind out today, so that was absolutely perfect. Now it's beeping out the altitude. We got 1,084 feet. Now the prototype on this that we launched before gave us uh, 1,206 feet, so a little bit less altitude. So. We're gonna load this back up and try it again with the single cell motor. One cell motor in three, two, one. Ow. It saved itself. All right, well, we're not really interested in the data that the altimeter is giving us because that was a pretty unsuccessful flight. Um, clearly the motor blew up just shortly after liftoff, which is a real shame because that motor tested out just fine on the ground test, but clearly we must just be very close to the limits on that motor with the number 21 nozzle and that single fuel cell. Uh, we could certainly increase that to a 22 nozzle, but it's going to greatly reduce our thrust. So we need to decide whether that's something we want to pursue with this design or not. We'll go back to the shop and see what we can figure out where to go next with this project. All right, so we got back to the shop and we watched all the video footage. And it turns out we caught the entire explosion event in frame on the camera. So you don't catch that video every day, so we figured we'd show that to you in slow motion because it's really kind of cool. So let's have a look at that. We see that the rocket's flying perfectly fine, and then all of a sudden, boom, the motor explodes. The rocket starts spinning end over end. The centrifugal force seems to shoot the nose cone off, which then pulls out the parachute. Then right after the parachute deploys, you see this little explosion and puff of smoke right under the parachute. That's the ejection charge exploding. And then the rest of the rocket comes down beautifully on the parachute. 
Now let's get back to the project. All right, so we went back and we looked at the footage. It looked like the one cell motor had plenty of thrust pushing the rocket off of the rod. In fact, it actually pushed the rocket off the rod a little bit faster than the three cell motor. So we felt that maybe just going up one more size to that number 22 nozzle will still have sufficient power. So I went ahead and rebuilt an entire new rocket, identical to the previous one and we rebuilt a brand new motor identical to the single fuel cell motor. We've just increased the nozzle size to a number 22 or 22 64 of an inch. And we're gonna see how this one performs. All right, so the altimeter is telling us we got to 1,246 feet. So we beat the altitude of both the previous launches of this style of rocket with this new motor. So we're gonna go back to the shop, we're gonna look at the video on all the launches we've done so far with this style and see what we've got for data. Now, one other interesting thing I was able to do at the landing of this that I've never done before, let's take a look at the landing video. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, so that was another great launch. Let's take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of the three-cell motor versus the one-cell motor. Now, on the left here, we've got the three-fuel cell motor with the number 20 nozzle. On the right, we've got the one-fuel cell motor with a number 22 nozzle. All right, so we'll stop the video right here. Just before the rocket with the one cell motor is coming off of the top of the rod. And you see that the rocket with the three cell motor is about six inches behind. If we continue on a little bit, we see that right here, just before the three cell motor has gotten the rocket up, just before it gets off the screen, the rocket with the one cell motor is in fact quite a ways behind. So just in that comparison, it looks like the three cell motor is outperforming the one cell motor. But what you have to remember is that the one cell motor is building up more and more pressure and more and more thrust through its entire burn cycle. So it hasn't reached its full potential by the time that it has left the screenshot of that particular video. And what we see in the overall picture is that the three cell motor got that rocket to 1,084 feet, but the one cell motor managed to get it to 1,246 feet. So just in the total altitude test, the one cell motor outperformed the three cell motor. So we're really happy that the one cell motor outperformed the three cell in the altitude test because that's really what we were shooting for. And this is the motor that we're going to show you how to build. In the next video, we're going to show you the complete start to finish process of every part that you need and every component that you're going to need to build this motor. It's really a fun motor to build. It's easy and it's inexpensive. And that was what we were going for on this entire project. So we're really happy with the performance of this motor. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And there's a like button there as well. Hit that if you like what we're doing. It really helps our channel out. And we thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.